So back when I was in college, I did uh, a lot of theater, and some of it was Gilbert and Sullivan. And there's a line in one of those musicals, things are seldom what they seem, skim milk masquerades as cream. Um, sometimes the appearance of things is a little different from all of the reality, at least. So, hey, we're past Halloween, right? And headed towards Christmas, and here's a nice, typical... Christmas card. You got Mary and Joseph and Jesus and the wise men, and that's beautiful. Okay, great. That's what's going on, right? Well, imagine getting a Christmas card from John, and here's the opening of Revelation chapter 12. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. And then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. And there was war in heaven. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to find a card with all that on it. But this is John's Christmas story, basically. Now, uh, the woman could be the nation of Israel. It could be the church. It could be Mary, perhaps. Uh, the dragon is Satan, and John tells us that a little later in chapter 12. But these, uh, they are referred to as signs. But the child is the child. That's why we know this is Christmas. Now, is this true? Well, yes. Is this true? Yes. You've got both of these things going on because with God coming into the world in the flesh... Uh, the good news that the angels tell the shepherds also means that the forces of heaven are coming against the forces of hell to provide for our deliverance. Now, if you go on and finish the rest of the chapter, you will find that uh, Satan is not going to give us up all that easily. And there's uh, a great battle and so forth. And the church, that's us, are taken out into the wilderness for this 1260 days, this three and a half years, this long time but not forever time that we've talked about earlier. And one of the things that Satan or the dragon throws at us as the church is this flood, this river that tries to sweep us away. And this river at the end of chapter 12 is basically a torrent of lies and deception and um, abuse and uh, all of that. One of my favorite secular columnists, Peggy Noonan, has a column called The Culture of Death where she talks about this flood of lies that comes at us these days. But... Uh, it does not have the final word. God is able to protect us in so many different ways, and even though we may be out in the wilderness, even though we may be facing a, a flood of deceptions, as we look to our Lord, he will give us the real thing. So, we can always count on the gospel to give us the water of living, uh, of the water of life. God bless you today.